Hello and welcome once again to the hard Brexit scenario on Football Manager 2020 where the UK has left UEFA and left to fend for itself by creating its own Champions League, a whole new league system and basically just something that I did when I was bored. So let's have a look at the latest thing. It is the 1st of January 2023. We are three years into the future. And as is tradition, which is something I get to say a lot now, as it's been going for quite a while, uh, we are going to have a look at the World Awards and see who has won what awards. We'll start with the one that automatically comes up when you do it. That's the World Golden Ball. And as you can see, Mo Salah, he's getting on. He's 30 years old now, but he's still winning awards. He is, uh, for the second time, the World Golden Ball winner. Second, Andrea Bellotti of Arsenal. Third, Bernardo Silva of Man City. While the goalkeeper of the year... That is Matthew Ryan of Brighton. Yeah, uh, Edison second, Cashbush Michael of Nottingham Forest now in third. He's 36 years old. Now, that's depressing to think about, considering I still remember his dad playing. Uh, we have the Footballer of the Year. Well, actually, there's... No, there's two Footballer of the Year. Uh, that's also Mo Salah. Uh, he's uh, only the first time he's won that one. Firmino won it the first time in 2020. Uh, second was Kevin De Bruyne, still at Man City. And third was Antoine Griezmann, still at Barcelona. Meanwhile, under-21 footballer of the year, Fabio Silva of Chelsea uh, has, has picked up. So for the first time in about three years, uh, someone from a, from a team that you would normally associate with winning awards, has won the award. Uh, unlike the last two years where a Norwich player and a Swindon player won it. Uh, so, moving on. The World Golden Ball, we've had that one. Uh, the player, the World Player of the Year. I'm guessing Mo Salah. Yes, it is Mo Salah. He came first with Andrea Bellotti second, Bernardo Silva in third. And now, we'll move on to the World Team of the Year. We can see with that one, in goal, it's Ro Matthew Ryan from Brighton. We've got Max Ahrens, Amaric Laporte, Samuel Untiti of Chelsea now, and Ferland Mendy of Real Madrid in the back line. Two midfielders, uh, central or def defensive midfielders, in Matteo Guendouzi and Bernardo Silva, while a Middle three of attacking midfielders, Mo Salah, Kai Havertz and Raheem Sterling and Fabio Silva up front. And on the subs bench, we've got Edison, Eda Militao, Rafael Varane, uh, Kevin De Bruyne, Sadio Mane, Usman Dembele and Andrea Bellotti. Surprising that Bellotti didn't make the first team considering he came second in two of the awards. Uh, but apparently Fabio Silva is that much better. So there are your World Awards. We'll continue with this world theme as we head over to the Club World Cup and see how the results panned out in that for the 2022 edition. Spoiler alert there for the final, but let's quickly go over to the group stage. We can see that Group A, Real Madrid were first, three wins out of three. Atlanta United were second, Boca Juniors third. In fact, those two had the exact same... Uh, uh, record, but uh, I'm guessing Atlanta United are ahead on head to head. No, they're ahead on goal, on on alphabetical order. Uh, so, oh well. Group B, Chelsea were top, uh, and they qualified for the semi-finals. Al Sad in in second, SuperSport United third, Pyramids in fourth, and in Group C, Atletico Madrid came top with. Three wins out of three. All, all three groups, the group winners had 100% record. Second place, AC Milan, the only team who came second to win two games, which meant they were able to qualify for the semi-finals. River Plate in third, Al Arabi of Kuwait in fourth. And uh, that meant the semi-final lineups were Real Madrid against Chelsea and Atletico Madrid v AC Milan. Uh, Chelsea beat Real Madrid 2-1. Inter uh, AC Milan beat Atletico Madrid 3-1. Uh, and then the final... At the Yokohama Stadium in Yokohama, Japan, Chelsea beat AC Milan 4-1. That's quite a surprising result, thinking about it. See here, Mason Mount, Jaden Sancho, Krizatov, Piatek. Chelsea have got quite a strong team these days, haven't they? Literally bought half the best players in the world. And uh, AC Milan got a consolation goal in the last minute, but by then it was all too late. Uh, AC Milan with Nathan Redmond uh, and Andy Harwood, whoever he is. Um, but uh, yeah, that is the uh, Club World Cup or Club World Championship 2022 in Japan. Chelsea, your winners.
Uh, looking at that, I believe we've had uh, English winners in three of the four seasons we've had. I'm not going to look at that, actually, because that's going to ruin a future episode that I'm planning. Um, but what we'll now look at is those damn Champions Leagues, because the group stages have finished in both UK and UEFA's Champions Leagues. So let's have a look and see what the lineups are and who's gone through and whatnot, starting with the Brexit Champions League, and we will just skip over to... No, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. So, in the group stage, going through from Group A, Everton and Lincoln City. Lincoln qualifying with one point ahead of Dunfermline Athletic. Group B, Norwich City and Gillingham making it through. Swansea, a disappointing third place. Group C, Leicester City and Peterborough United uh, smashing through. Hereford not doing enough to get through. Group D, AFC Bournemouth, the only qualifier in Group D. Queen of the South not getting enough points to make it through as one of the best runners up with 14. Group E, Bristol City are through and joining them a Truro City uh, making it through possibly for the first time I think. in se This is the fourth season so they may have done it previously. They have been in this competition every single year but they finished three points ahead of Yeovil, Yeovil Town. In Group F, Arsenal. They were I believe they'd already qualified last time we checked. They've gone through with 100% record, 24 points out of a possible 24. And that includes, well, they're all pretty sensible wins. The highest was a 5-0. That's pretty disappointing, really. Dundee have joined them in the next round on goal difference, uh, finishing ahead of MK Dons thanks to a 8-goal swing. Islanders, dead last, minus 25 goal difference. Not a good season for them, but... They made it. That's that's what counts. Group G, Watford top 20 points. Uh, and they are the only ones to go through as Plymouth miss out thanks to their goal difference. Uh, they weren't able to go through as one of the best runners up. Group H, Stoke City and Southend United making it through. A disappointing one for Barrow. Uh, despite uh, their impressive league season, they were only able to get 10 points in the group stage. And then, moving on, Group I, Southampton and Swindon Town, both finishing on 21 points, winning every match apart from one against each other, uh, meaning they're both through and they both fly through. Mansfield had no chance from the looks of things. Uh, Group J, Man City, they were already through. We knew that. They went through with a 100% record. St Mirren joined them with a decent 18 points, losing only the two matches against Manchester City. Uh, a disappointing one for Cardiff, uh, in finishing in fourth. Uh, in Group K, Burnley, 100% record they've gone through. And Aberdeen are joining them, just like in Man City's group. The only teams that Aberdeen lost to were Burnley. Uh, Stratford in third, a good campaign for them, not going through, but they uh, they got four wins out of eight and lost four. Uh, so they only lost to Burnley and Aberdeen. Uh, in fact, this goes through the whole group. Basically, no draws. Everyone beats the team below them uh, from the looks of things. Uh, in Group L, Newcastle United top with 18 points. Top on goal difference because Crew also had 18 points, meaning they are both going through uh, to the second round. Group M, Derby County and Oxford United are making it through. Derby on 20 points, Oxford on 17 Five points clear of Hibernian in third. In Group N, Luton Town. They only lost one game all campaign, and that gave them 21 points and a decent haul to make it through. And they are joined by Shrewsbury, who only lost one game themselves, but they did drop points in an extra one as well. Group O, Reading and Ross County. They're both, both on 21 points, both only losing to each other. And both qualifying for the next round. Next best were Northampton and Wrexham, both on nine points. Another poor campaign for House Bashers. Uh, not scoring a goal this time. And uh, the heaviest defeat was a 7-0 uh, home loss against Reading. Group P, Aston Villa and Celtic making it through, both on 17 points. Four points clear of Motherwell in third. Aloha Athletic, their first attempt at the Brexit Champions League, ends in failure, unfortunately, for them. And finally, in Group Q, Brighton and Hove Albion, I believe they were already through on our last video. They won the group with 21 points, and they're joined in the next round by Huddersfield Town on 19, and uh, they uh, finished six points clear of St Johnston. So let's have a look at that second round draw. 
We can see Derby v Ross County, Norwich v Luton, Truro Southampton, Manchester City v Leicester in a massive tie, Lincoln City v St Mirren, Everton v Dundee, Oxford v Aberdeen, Reading and Burnley are playing, Watford v Brighton, AFC Bournemouth v Newcastle United, Huddersfield Town v Peterborough, Arsenal are playing Bristol City, Celtic play Swindon, Shrewsbury play Southend, Aston Villa, Gillingham and Crew Alexandra v Stoke City. Now in the Brexit League, no, not in the Brexit League, in the Empire League, we'll have a quick look at who's gone through. Oh, bloody sensitive mouse. Uh, so the team's going through there. Group A, Ebbsfleet finishing top of the group. That's an impressive season for them. Uh, and Hearts joining them in the next round. Group B, Crawley and Sunderland making it through both on 19 points. Group C, Wickham Wanderers are through on 22, with Cambridge also going through with 19. Two teams in Group D as well, and they're both Scottish, Rangers and Hamilton Academical. Then again, four of the teams in there were Scottish, so... You had to expect at least one of them would make it. Group E, Nottingham Forest and Burton Albion are through Nottingham Forest with a 100% record. Uh, group F, Hartlepool United, the only qualifier from that group, but with a 100% record. Uh, impressive until you look at the other teams in the group, Leamington, Bell of Leven, Gillsfield and Bellboys. Uh, group G, Dundee United and Larne, the only Northern Irish team, I believe, to have made it through to this round for the, and the first Northern Irish team to make it in about two years. Uh, so well done to them. They won six of the of the uh, eight matches. Uh, so yeah, well done to them. Group H, Colchester and Air United are through to the next round. Group I, Wolves, I believe they were already through anyway. Uh, they are top with 22 points with Macclesfield Town also going through on 17 in second place. Group J, Carlisle and Morton uh, have qualified on 21 and 19 points respectively. Group K, Falkirk and Inverness Caledonian Thistle, two of the Scottish teams going through in that group as well, uh, with both with decent records. Group L, Sheffield United, they've qualified top with 22 points. Chesterfield in second on 19, also making it into the second round, while Group M, uh, Manchester United, I'm pretty sure they were already through on the last round. They've gone through with a 100% record, 36 goals scored. That's a tremendous one. Uh, we already knew about the 10-0 win against Lisbon or United. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so they've gone through. Stevenage also going through on 16 points, so well done to them. Uh, unlike second place in Group N, who did not go through, uh, thanks to their measly 15 points, uh, Chelsea going through as the sole team from Group N with a 100% record, uh, as expected. Group O, another 100% record there. Liverpool going through on 24 points. And joining them are TNS, who were, the sec who were second place on 18 points. Uh, Group P, Blackburn Rovers, they also were through already by the time we were on the last video. They've won the group on 22 points. Torquay in second on 17, also making it through. And finally in Group Q, Portsmouth, they're through and Grimsby, both of them finishing on 21 points, only oozing to each other, Institute, a full 11 points behind them in third. So those are the teams going through in that one, and let's have a look at the second round draw for that. Uh, it is TNS v Burton, Chesterfield versus Manchester United, Chelsea v Macclesfield, Hearts v Blackburn, Larne, the only Northern Irish team to make it through in a couple of years against Torquay, so they've got a good chance of making it through too. Dundee United v Ebbsfleet United, Stevenage v Rangers, Liverpool play Hartlepool, Inverness Caledonian Thistle against Falkirk, Air United against Carlisle, Wickham Wanderers play Nottingham Forest, Crawley against Morton, Wolves v Grimsby, Colchester v Sheffield United, Portsmouth v Cambridge, and Hamilton Academical versus Sunderland. So... Some interesting ties to look out for there. Obviously, we've got the Cup Winners' Cup, and we'll be covering this one in full next time round, but it has already started. We can see the tables so far, but those, as I said, we'll see uh, how Man City won it in the next one, which I've no doubt is going to happen. Uh, in the UEFA Champions League, let's have a look there. Less uh, groups to go through, and we pretty much knew most of the teams going through after last time uh, because there was only one match left to play and it goes as follows so group a bear leverkusen and hapwell besheva have gone through uh, group b valencia and inter milan uh, group c bayern munich and real madrid porto also finishing on the same points on the same goal difference as both bayern munich and real madrid but unfortunately for them it goes down to head to head uh, for these actually it should have been head to head for the second to, for the first uh, separator anyway, and Porto lost that one. 
I might have gone down to goal difference actually in, t in certain parts. Uh, but one thing is safe to say, Porto missed out. Uh, despite it being so close. In Group D, PSG, we knew they were going through. Krasnodar have joined them in the, in the second round. Barcelona and Doxa Katakopius of Cyprus have made it through. That's an interesting one. Um, well done to them at the first attempt. Group F, Benfica and Panathinaikos are the qualifiers. Group G, Lyon and Hertha Berlin. And finally in Group H, Atletico Madrid and Juventus are the teams that have qualified. Borussia Dortmund and Ajax missing out in the true group of death. Uh, much like that one's pretty much a group of death, but not as much of a group of death as the other one, possibly. Uh, in the second round draw... We have Atletico Madrid v Bayern Munich. That one's going to be huge. Valencia, Hapoel Belshiva. Beersheva, sorry. Uh, Paris Saint-Germain v Real Madrid. That one's going to be huge as well. Barcelona, Benfica. Doxa Catacopius play into Milan. Bayer Leverkusen are against Lyon. Juventus against Krasnodar. And Panathinaikos against Hertha Berlin. The team's going through in the Europa League. We will take a quick look here. Uh, so from Group A, Sporting Lisbon and Marseille. Group B, Hoffenheim and Getafe. Group C, Napoli and Pauk. Group D, Zenit St. Petersburg and Hajduk Split. Group E, Ibar and Gal Galatasaray. Group F, Lazio and Bilbao. Group G, AC Milan and Spartak Moscow. And Group H, Ren and Young Boys. And a quick flick through the second round draw. Let's see if there's any standout ties. Galatasaray or... Oh, Marseille v Getafe, Galatasaray v Spartak, they're both decent games. Lazio v Hoffenheim, Napoli AC Milan, that's probably going to be a good one. AC Milan, the current champions and, and the Cup, Club World Cup finalists. Uh, we also have uh, a, a Spanish derby as well as an Italian one with Athletic Bilbao playing Ibar. We've also got Ren v Sporting, so there's some decent ties there in the Europa Conference League. Uh, we will have a look at the groups, who's gone through in the groups. So, Olympiakos and Utrecht from Group A. Group B, Torino and Werder Bremen. Uh, I think those two were already through anyway. Uh, Deportiva La Coruña and Siroki Brieg of uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, group D, Tanava and Zeljeznica of Bosnia. So, both Bosnian teams going through. Uh, group E, Arsenal, Tula and Universitea Craiova. Group F, uh, Trabzonspor and Jagielona. Jagiellonia, sorry. Uh, group G, Austria, Vienna and Alexandria of Ukraine. And finally in Group H, Slavia, Prague and Vittoria Gimarish. Uh, and in the second round, the standout ties there. Uh, so if we just have a look and see who the big teams are playing. So Deportiva La Coruña are away at Zelchesnica. Uh, Torino are playing Jagiellonia. Uh, plus we have Werder Bremen v Austria, Vienna. And uh, maybe Vittoria Gimarish v Olympiakos. Those are the main ties. Uh, obviously, there's there's other very strong teams in there. It's anyone's to win, really, uh, which is always good when it comes to this stage. If you don't know who's going to win, that's well, that's the best type. Um, right, we're not going to have a look. We're just going to have a look at the main divisions in Scotland. And so let's go to Glasgow. The main division in Glasgow. We'll have a look at the main ones in Wales as well. Have Celtic and Rangers caught up yet? Oh, of course they haven't. Uh, Rangers are on 21 games played. Celtic 18, but the average in the division is 24, 25, which is why Rangers and Celtic are third and fourth respectively. First still are Dumbarton on 64 points. Second are Partick Thistle on 63. But Rangers, despite having so many games in hand, are only three points behind top spot. And Celtic, having even more games in hand, are only 10 points behind top spot. So I imagine both of those will be caught in the near future, I imagine. Rob Roy and BSC Glasgow still uh, beating out uh, Queen's Park. Uh, so well done to those two. I'm looking, I want to see Rob Roy make it second, but they're not going. I know they're not going to, but I just want to see it. Uh, a quick look at the Scottish Cup uh, to see if we're at a point where it's won one page yet. Uh, it is. We're down to the uh, last 16 in Scotland. The sixth round and... Uh, Celtic v Hearts, one of those will fall. Can Celtic regain the Scottish Cup after losing it for the first time in uh, in this era last season? Rangers play Motherwell. Are the champ reigning champions still out? Yep, they're playing Inverness, Cal Caledonian Thistle. So an interesting lineup there. Uh, the only there's a couple of small teams still in it: Dalbiti, Cove, Gala Feridine. Uh Who knows who will win? We'll look at the uh, League Cups next time. Uh, over to Wales and their main division, South Glamorgan. 
We can see that Cardiff top, 100% record still, only conceded one goal. Uh, once again, it's going well for Cardiff. Uh, Swansea, have they caught up their fixtures yet? Uh, almost. They have 19 wins out of 19. They're top by 16 points. And they still have two games in hand over second place Afan Lido. It's, uh, again, also like Cardiff, it's going very well for them so far. Uh, and if we have a look at their cup, just to uh, be fair, see if they're down to one page as well. Uh, they are not. No, they haven't. They're, the draw for this round uh, of the next round comes late on, later in this particular game day. But you see, there's Swansea are waiting to play Ebervale in the sixth round. Cardiff have beaten Panteg. Newport County have beaten Wrexham. So that's one of the bigger teams already eliminated. And that's that is pretty much all the bigger teams. Uh, Yes, uh, we'll see more about that one next time out. Over to England, and we'll go through those ones one by one, as per usual. Uh, so, in Bedfordshire, Luton Town, top of the league by six points ahead of Leighton in second. They themselves six points ahead of Barton in third. Berkshire, Reading, they're top by eight points. They have a 100% record. It's uh, it's Everything's coming up Reading so far, no no stop of the dominance there. Maidenhead in second on 40 points. Bristol and Gloucestershire. Unfortunately, Forest Green have uh, faltered a little bit despite not losing a game yet. Uh, they've only... They're still on zero losses, but they've drawn a couple of extra games against the two bigger teams. Uh, and so Bristol Rovers have overtaken them. Bristol City, though, still top five points clear. Uh, in Buckinghamshire, MK Dons and Wickham Wanderers both still on still equal footing, both on 43 points. MK Dons lead, on, lead the table only on goal difference. Uh, then we move over to Cambridgeshire and Peterborough United, 51 points, but still in second place is Peterborough North Star, uh, which I'm... Northern Star, sorry. Let's, let's, let's not beat around the bush here. That is great. Great news uh, because it means that one of our, one of our newer teams is, is putting up a fight. And could they pop Cambridge down into, into third permanently for this season and take that Empire League spot? Let's hope so. Peterborough top on 51 points, though. In Cheshire, Crew Alexandra, they have taken a commanding lead of eight points over Macclesfield Town uh, to uh, possibly cement another title for them. In Cornwall, Truro, yeah, we knew they were going to be top. They are now... 17 points clear at the top of the Cornwall Premier Division. Had to do a bit of quick maths in my head there. Bodmin leading the rest on 25 points. Cumbria, Barrow are top, but it's not the same top they were top that they were last season. They are only one point clear, unlike last season when they were about 12 points clear by now. I can't remember, if I'm honest. So Carlisle still in the running. Uh, Workington a distant third. Derbyshire. Derby are top, they've regained top spot after Chesterfield were top last time out, but it's only on goal difference. Quite a big goal difference, if I'm honest, uh, but it's Chesterfield are not out of it just yet. They can still try and take it, both on 45 points, but uh, Derby have a massive goal difference there uh, between the two. Devon, Plymouth, Argyle are top. They are five points clear of Torquay in second. Torquay, three points clear of Exeter. And then Tiverton are the best of the rest. Dorset, Bournemouth, still 100% record there. Uh, 48 points and 50 goals scored to, with nothing conceded. Uh, but they are only five points clear. Weymouth still in, still in touching distance. Uh, maybe one day someone will catch Bournemouth. In Durham. Hartlepool are top by one single point ahead of Spennymore. Reigning champions Darlington in third, uh, four points away from them. Then it's Fornaby and Stockton. So it's it's all quite close in Durham. Essex, Southend United, 46 points. Six points clear of Colchester in second uh, on 40. Braintree have, uh, have faltered and dropped from second spot down to fourth uh, on goal difference uh, behind Billericay. Greater London. And Chelsea still have a 100% record. Uh, it's similar to Arsenal's season last season. They had a 100% record going into about now. 
but they did lose their first game in the in the gap between now and when we next check it. Uh, Tottenham in second on 42 points, ahead on goal difference of Arsenal, uh, and then Palace in fourth. Brentford have dropped down from second to fifth place, uh, so maybe not all of the dominance is going to be. Maybe maybe not all the little smaller teams are taking over yet. West Ham a disappointing seventh, and the Met Police still in dead last, unfortunately, on goal difference. Greater Manchester, and uh, unfortunately for us, Oldham have dropped from second down to third. Man City have overtaken them, uh, but they're only two points ahead of them. Manchester United still unbeaten and still in top spot, 46 points, four points clear of Man City. Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, Southampton are top, and they are six points ahead of Portsmouth in second. Aldershot and Eastleigh both two points away from Portsmouth. It's kind of close for the Empire League spot. Southampton looking to cement another first place. In Herefordshire, Hereford are going to win the league. They haven't done it yet, though. Uh, we, we speculated that they could do it, uh, possibly by the time we did the next video. But unfortunately for them, they haven't. They are still, though, quite a few points clear. I would say 36, no, 38, no, 37. 37 points clear. I'm going to just hope my maths is right there. Apologies for Pegasus Juniors. Third, uh, second, and Westfield's third. Uh, in Hertfordshire, Watford are three points clear of Stevenage, and then there's a big gap between them and Boreham Wood in third. Kent, Gillingham, top, 46 points. Ebbsfleet are second on 42. Then Dover Athletic, a few points behind him on 36. Maidstone rounding up uh, the top four on 34. In Lancashire, and this is an interesting one for the top two. Burnley have, uh, they've not dropped too many more points since we last spoke. The Neva have Blackburn, Blackburn top on 44 points and Burnley in second on 40. And then there's a big gap, uh, 11 points between Burnley and third, fourth and fifth. Preston, Fleetwood and Accrington all on 29 and then Blackpool and Morecambe both on 28. In Leicestershire and Rutland, Leicester are top, 100% record still, nothing's changed there, they've, they've, they're top, Colville are leading the rest on 44, and then a big gap between them and Shepshed in third. Uh, then we've got in Lincolnshire, Lincoln City top by one point ahead of Scunthorpe, who are two points ahead of Grimsby Town, and then a 10 point gap between them and Boston. Oh, I've missed out Merseyside there, and I've done it again. Uh, in Merseyside, Liverpool. Top of the league, 100% record, Everton, uh, unfortunately for them. They lost to uh, Liverpool, but we knew that last time. Tranmere, though, they didn't. Uh, they hadn't lost to Liverpool last time. They have now, 2-0 to Liverpool. Liverpool pulling out all the wins they need uh, to try and regain the Merseyside Premier Division title. They're on 48 points. They're three points clear of Everton and six points clear of Tranmere. Southport heading up the rest, and uh, that, they're only three points. There's increments of three points for each uh, on that one in Norfolk Norwich top of the league 100% record 42 points and five points clear of Kings Lynn in second Northamptonshire Northampton are top 41 points they are six points ahead of Kettering in second and Brackley in third both of them on 35 points uh, Kettering leading on goal difference Northumberland the reigning champions Tweedmouth they have 43 points and are clear eight points clear of Morpeth and Blythe and uh, then Berwick and fourth have no chance of catching any of them in Nottinghamshire Nottingham Forest are top uh, they're, they're lead Mansfield the reigning champions by four points and then there's a six point gap between Mansfield and third place Notts County so it's looking like it's going to be between Nottingham Forest and Mansfield once again can Mansfield catch them once again in Oxfordshire Oxford United are top with Oxford City in second. There's five points between those two. And then four, the four points between second and third, Oxford City and Town United. Shropshire, Shrewsbury are top, 43 points. But there's only a one-point gap between them and TNS, who, as we know, have had a successful season so far, qualifying for the second round of the Empire League. AFC Telford are six points behind TNS. Uh, Somerset, Yeovil Town. They have a decent seven-point lead over Poulton uh, in second, and then uh, Western Supermare in third on 35, Bath on 34. Uh, but I'd say it's Yeovil's to lose now. Staffordshire, uh, Stoke City have dropped points in a couple of games, and therefore they aren't unbeatable. Uh, but they haven't been beat. I, I got I got my words muddled up there. Uh, either way, 
Port Vale a second and only three points behind Stoke and Burton a third, only five points behind Stoke. The season is definitely not over there yet. In Suffolk, Ipswich, I think it might be over there. Uh, they have a seven point lead over Needham Market in second. Uh, 73 points to 66. You've also got Berrytown, FC Sudbury, also in the running for second spot, but I'd say Ipswich are a safe bet for that top spot, despite not having a 100% record. Drawing with Mildon Hall earlier in the season. In Surrey, Woking are top. They're five points clear of Staines. Uh, despite Woking dropping points this season, it's uh, not as many as Staines have dropped. Uh, so uh, hopefully, can, can we get uh, a gap shortener? Who knows? In Sussex, Brighton are top, 100% record, still top, five points clear of Crawley. In second, uh, Crawley, 13 points ahead of third place, Eastbourne Borough. Then in Tynham Weir, it's all very close in Tynham Weir, with first, second and third all on 47 points. Only goal difference separating Newcastle, Sunderland and Gateshead in that order. Uh, then you've got the, both the Shields and Hebburn as per usual. Uh, in Warwickshire, Stratford. They're frustrating, Nuneaton still. Uh, they are top with 46 points. Nuneaton second on 43. Uh, it's between them two this season. Leamington are eight points behind Nuneaton in third. West Midlands, West Bromwich Albion, top 60 points. Second of Birmingham City, five points behind them. Aston Villa, an extra point behind them. Wolves, an extra two points behind them. Uh, and then Coventry, heading up the rear of the... Uh, of the bigger teams on 49. So it's all to play for for the Empire League spot. West Brom with a commanding lead at the top though. In Wiltshire, Swindon Town are top. 54 points and 5 points clear of Salisbury, of Salisbury FC. Sorry, not Salisbury City. They went bust years ago, didn't they? Uh, Laverstock and Ford and third on 47. And Swindon Supermarine, who were top last time, if you remember, have dropped all the way down to 5th place. On 45, uh, a full nine points behind Swindon uh, Town. So that's a disappointing one, especially as I put their badge on the cover. Maybe I cursed them by doing that. In Worcestershire, Ked Kidderminster, they're not uh, willing to let go of their superiority over the other teams, having a nine-point lead at the top of the Worcester Worcestershire Premier Division. And in Yorkshire, Leeds are top on goal difference ahead of Huddersfield Town, both of them on 50 points. Uh, quite a big goal difference uh, there uh, between the two. Uh, Eight goal, no, 12 goals to be exact. Uh, Leeds are better off. Hull are in third on 48. Barnsley on 47. Rotherham on 46. Sheffield United on 44. Uh, this season, another one that is definitely not over yet. Middlesbrough also in seventh on 43. Anyone could, anyone out of that top seven could win the league uh, because there's only six points between those, no, seven points between those seven teams, uh, which is great. I, I look forward to the ending. Uh, can Huddersfield retain? Can Leeds regain? Or can we see someone new holding that crown? I'm going to have a quick look at the Greater London one because they have a couple of bigger teams. Barnet and, Sut and Sutton, uh, both on 58 points. Both pretty much guaranteed promotion at this rate. Uh, Welling United on 47. The other rele relegated team were Hayes and Yedding, and they're not doing quite as well as you can tell. But uh, we don't need to know about that too much. Uh, let's head over to the FA Cup. Uh, for our final spot uh, and we can see what's happening there they are on the sixth round uh, is the seventh round draw that happens later on this game day uh, but uh, clearly there's going to be a lot of uh, someone or someone in that draw uh, we can see that Spurs have been beaten by MK Dons on penalties uh, so that's one of the bigger teams already eliminated. Eliminated. We've got Man City playing Chelsea, so another one is going to be eliminated there. Possibly the reigning champions could be eliminated by Chelsea. You never know. Uh, we've also got uh, Kidderminster v Man U, so that's uh, probably a Man U win there. Uh, Fulham, Crystal Palace in a London derby. Uh, Preston Leicester. Uh, we've also got Reading are already through. Bolton are already through. And Arsenal are already through after they beat Bradford. Uh, we're missing a Liverpool here. Uh, so that's one team that apparently has already been eliminated. Uh, also got a Norwich West Ham game, which could be interesting. Uh, so all to play for in the FA Cup. Uh, and now uh, we can see who goes through next time. Uh, next next time round, we'll see who's won the Cup Winners' Cup, and then we'll have a look at all, all the league tables, and uh, we'll have a look at the league cups and the and see how this has gone as well. So until then, like, subscribe, and rock on.